Hello, and welcome to my lecture, How Samus Got Her Name, It's Biblical. It won't take the whole hour. Here's Samus Aran. You may recognize her from such games as Metroid, Metroid 2, The Return of Samus, Super Metroid, Metroid Fusion, Metroid Prime, Metroid Other M, and Super Smash Brothers. What you may not know is how the names Samus and Aaron were chosen. I mean, chosen. Metroid was released in Japan in August of 1986 by Nintendo. In researching this topic, I found an article writ written by someone going by the name Infinity's End. Infinity's End writes, Samus Aran is a very unusual but unique name. It's a little redundant. The etymology of Samus refers to a female variant of the name Seamus the Celtic version of James, which means he who supplants. Keeping with the North, Northern European naming convention, the origin of the name Aran could possibly refer to the Aran Islands, which can be found on the west coast of Ireland. I think this is incorrect for a couple of reasons. First of all, I don't believe that Samus is a female variant of Seamus. Uh, when you have male and female variants in names, the difference is typically in the ending, not near the beginning. In some cases, the difference is an additional syllable at the end of the name. For example, Michael versus Michaela, or Judd versus Judy, or Robert versus Roberta. Uh, in other cases, it's a different letter, such as Mario versus Maria, just a different letter at the end. Um, furthermore, I don't think Samus was a female name in the first place. Um, in an interview with Sakamoto, Yoshio Sakamoto, it says, once we entered the final stage of development, we started talking about having different endings and a surprise, and that's when they said, wouldn't it be a shocker if Samus turned out to be a woman? Um, in the original, uh, the, the NES instruction manual, NES instruction manual, refers to Samus as a he, and it does so intentionally. It's not just a mistake in the translation. It's in the original Japanese, as this article, uh, 2013 article from Legends of Localization, describes. It says that the Japanese language doesn't use pronouns very much, so things like he and she aren't used very often at all. Uh, they could have very easily written the description of Samus without referring to her gender. But... They use the word kara, which means he or him, three times on the page. It's these little red oval ovals. Um, the article goes on, this pronoun was, uh, pronoun use was clearly intended as misdirection, meaning the Japanese writers definitely intended for the player to believe that Samus was a man at first. So it's certainly reasonable to say that Samus is a male name uh, and that's to keep the gender reveal hidden. Furthermore, I don't think that the last name Aaron refers to the Aran Islands next to Ireland. Um, and here those are, the Aran Islands. And here they are next to Ireland. Um, the reason for that is more direct. Uh, in a 2004 interview in Nintendo Dream with two of the creators of Metroid, Yoshio Sakamoto and Hiroji Keotake. Uh, in the interview, it says that the name is a reference to Pele here on the right. Uh, it's, he's one of the greatest football players of all time. And by football, I of course mean soccer. Pele's real name is Edson Arantes do Nascimento, and it's the Arantes part where Samus's last name, Aaron, comes from. Right there. Aaron. Uh, here's what Pele looks like, and here's Pele scoring a goal. I like that Samus gets to morph into a ball, uh, keeps her connection to football. 
Evidently, Hiroji Keotaki thought that Pele's full name was Samus Arantes. Nascimento, but Samus isn't even close to Edson. So, what could the creators of Metroid have been thinking about that caused them to have the name Samus in their heads? Unfortunately, I'm neither a time traveler nor a mind reader. However, we know that the development, that the development team was thinking about ancient Greece at the time they made Metroid because this is the same team that released the game Kid Icarus just four months later, December of 1986. Kid Icarus has numerous references to Greek mythology. Icarus himself comes from the legend of Icarus and Daedalus, where Daedalus is an inventor who creates wings out of wax to get himself and his son Icarus to fly away from the Mediterranean island of Crete. That is here, Crete. Uh, away from the labyrinth and its monster, the Minotaur. Uh, Icarus, of course, flies too high, gets too close to the sun, his waxen wings melt, and he falls into the sea and drowns. Uh, the main character of Kid Icarus is Pit, uh, but he has some qualities of Icarus, as well as Perseus and Theseus. Uh, other references to Greek mythology from the instruction manual include Pluton, uh, which is Pluto, the god of wealth and or the underworld. It's complicated. There's also Medusa, seen here, um, the end boss of the game. And she has snakes for hair and can kill you with a glance. And there's Palutena, the goddess of light. Uh, the name Palutena actually is a combination of Pallas Athena. Pallas Athena, um, one of the many names for Athena, aka Minerva, the goddess of wisdom and strategy. Uh, another item that connects these two games is the Komato. It's the enemy Komato here. Uh, Komato is described in the manual as a mysterious floating creature. Nobody knows where it came from. One theory has it that it came from a planet other than the Earth. It's a nasty jellyfish monster. And this is clearly a reference to the Metroids from the game Metroid. Look at that, we have three dots, and four little tentacle teeth. In fact, the picture in the Kid Icarus version here is even more accurate to the original than the picture Metroid's instruction manual. Now there's somebody else who is thinking about ancient Greece, and his name is Luke. Uh, Luke who, you may ask? Luke the Doctor. Uh, not this Doctor Luke, who won awards for such songs as My Life Would Suck Without You and Your Love Is My Drug, among others, before being the defendant in a series of lawsuits about sexual assault and abuse. No, I mean Luke the Physician, who wrote two books of the Bible, Luke and Acts. Uh, I trust you brought your Bibles. Uh, go ahead and open that to the book of Acts, chapter 20, verses 14 and 15. And if you don't have your Bible with you, you can read along on the screen. Uh, it says, And when he met with us at Assos, we took him in and came to Mytilene. And we sailed thence and came the next day over against Chios. And the next day we arrived at Samos and tarried at Trogilium. And the next day we came to Miletus. Uh, now, we can follow this path ourselves. Paul starts up here in Assos. This is uh, in Turkey, or Anatolia. Starts in Assos in this section. And then um, travels to Mytilene, which is spelled Mytilene here. Then he goes south to the city or island of Chios, right here. And then from there, he gets to Samos. And what's this? Samos is right next to the Icarian Sea, uh, named for the boy Icarus, who drowned in it. And there's also a nearby island of Icaria. Um, our keen spellers 
we'll notice that there's one difference between Samos and Samus, and that's the letter O versus U. However, even that one letter of difference is not as big a difference as it seems. Google Books has an old book titled A Classical Dictionary containing a copious amount, account of all the proper names mentioned in ancient authors. And at 953 pages, I have to say copious is the right word for it. The book was printed in 1839, written earlier than that, and it does contain a notable spelling of the island we're talking about, and that is Samus, an island in the Aegean Sea on the coast of Asia Minor. It's the same island that was mentioned in the Book of Acts. We also see that Samus can even be a person's name, in this case the son of Ancius and Samia. And while the author John Donne would have you believe that no man is an island, he maybe wasn't aware of this Samus. Now, I wouldn't say that this is a terribly strong connection to the Bible, because the Bible lists hundreds, if not thousands, of people and places. And the, islands of, the island of Samos is only mentioned once in passing. However, we have another interview that suggests another biblical connection. This interview is with the composer of the game, Hirokazu, or Hip Tanaka. In, it, in the interview, Hip Tanaka claims that he named all the maps. He says, indeed, I named all the maps in the original Metroid. I'll focus on the two main areas in the game, Norfair and Brinstar. Norfair sounds a little bit like fire and is certainly described as a fire zone here in the instruction manual. Get a little bigger there. Norfair fire zone. Brinstar sounds a lot to me like brimstone. It's described as a rocky zone, but we also have all of this yellow liquid. The manual describes it as water, but I don't come across a lot of water uh, that's yellow, at least outside the bathroom. I think that the names Norfair and Brinstar come from the phrase fire and brimstone. Uh, I trust you still have your Bibles out, and you can turn with me to Genesis chapter 19, verse 24, where we see, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Uh, that's not the only mention of fire and brimstone in the Bible. We also see it in Revelation chapter 19, verse 20, and in a couple chapters later. Here it says, And the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet, dot, 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 these two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. Sulfur. Uh, sulfur is another word for brimstone. Uh, says Wikipedia. Brimstone, comma, an archaic term synonymous with sulfur. And sulfur is indeed yellow, exactly the color used for this damaging, quote, water, end quote, in Brinstar. Obviously, I can't be sure about the naming of things that took place over 30 years ago, but I do feel strongly enough about this connection that I named my Animal Crossing Island Samos in honor of the bounty hunter. Please listen to our friend Isabel sing my island's theme. Hey, <laughs> 